Well, we are now in 1 Chronicles chapters 4 through 9 in the second session. And uh, again, in the Hebrew, it's the words concerning the days is their name. But it was both 1 and 2 Chronicles were probably written by Ezra, and they are associated with Ezra and Nehemiah as the last books in the Hebrew Bible, typically. And there is a reckoning of the Hebrew Bible in which when you count Chronicles as one book, you actually have 22 uh, books in the Old Testament, which is the same number of the, the letters in the Hebrew alphabet. And the Septuagint calls it supplements because the, the, the Greek translators regarded Chronicles as a supplement to the materials of First and Second Kings. And Jerome called it the Chromicon, from which we get the, uh, the English title Chronicles. And we're, we're looking at the religious record in contrast to the previous thing we studied, which was the political record. And um, we have genealogies. And I apologize, there's no, I, I can't find a way to make those genealogies sparkling and understandable. I don't want to skip reading them because that's not our style of teaching anyway. But at the same time, I realize uh, wading through a list of names of most of the people you've never heard and, and added to my mispronunciation of them but it is what it is. We'll get in chapter 10, of course, after this session, we'll be right in the reign of David, and it starts to get very interesting. And then the reign of Solomon, and then finally the, the Davidic dynasty with all kinds of skullduggery in those days. But we're still in the genealogies. And we are, of course, in the monarchy, and uh, looking at material that basically parallels First and Second Kings. In fact, Second Samuel and First and Second Kings, to be precise about it. Well, let's continue. First Chronicles chapter 3, verse 12, last time. Amaziah, and Azariah, as, just to review a little bit, Azariah's son, Yotham, his son, and Ahaz, his son, and Hezekiah, his son, and Manasseh, his son, and Ammon, his son, and Josiah, his son. And the sons of Josiah were the firstborn, Yohanan, the second, Jehoiakim, that's important, the third, Zechariah, and the fourth, Shalom. Jehoiakim is going to be our focus here. The sons of Jehoiakim were Jeconiah, his son, and Zedekiah, his son. And the sons of Jeconiah, Asher, Shaltiel, his son. This presents Shal Salatiel as a son of Jeconiah. And Mikram also, and Pediah, and Shenazar, and Shemaiah, and Hashemah, and Nadabiah. Now the sons of Pediah, I want to get some of these names in front of us here. The sons of Pediah were Zerubbabel and Shemai, and the sons of Zerubbabel, Meshulam, and Hananiah, and Shalomith, their sister. Zerubbabel is going to be important because when they come out of the Babylonian captivity, when Cyrus captures the Babylonians, Daniel shows them a letter. It was written 150 years before he was born. It calls him by name, outlines his career. He's so impressed, it's a matter of history, that he releases them to, uh, as captives to go back and rebuild their temple. In fact, he brags in the cylinder of Cyrus, as you can read in the London Museum, that he took Babylon without a battle. But the point is, when they get back there, they will ultimately be governed, ruled, under Persian supervision, but they're going to be ruled by Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel is, in practical terms, the next one to step up in the role of the, of the uh, Davidic dynasty in one sense, although he's not a king, he's just a governor. But Zerubbabel is, and, and he's the son of Padiah, it says here, and that's a little confusing. And the sons of uh, Neariah, Elaviah, and the Hezekiah, and uh, Ezekim are three. And the sons of Elaniah were Hodaiah, and Eliashib, and Baliah, and Echab, and Yohanan, and Daliah, and Anai. Seven. Well, remember we talked, we closed last time from that passage with some difficulties. The rubble is elsewhere called the son of Shealtiel, not the son of Padiah, as presented here. A whole bunch of places. Also in Luke's genealogy, he identifies Shealtiel as the son of Neri, whose descent isn't even of Solomon. Not of the royal line. And Zerubbabel's line, the chronicler lists Zerubbabel's seven sons and one daughter, and the problem there is none of them appear in the genealogy of either Matthew or Luke. Okay, let's take the let's focus on the real issue that lies behind all of this, and that's the blood curse on Jeconiah on the royal line, recorded in Jeremiah twenty two thirty. Thus saith the Lord, Write ye this man childless, a man that shall not prosper in his days, for no man of his seed shall prosper sitting upon the throne of David and ruling any more in Judah. This presents a real scholastic problem to anyone studying the Davidic dynasty because out of that dynasty comes the Messiah. And yet on that line, the royal line is now pronounced a blood curse. 
and you'll discover something. There's, there is no way around this problem but one. And that's a virgin birth. A virgin birth predicted in Genesis 3. It's predicted by Isaiah in 7.14. And it also is in effect predicted here in a very subtle way. Let's take a look. Okay, I said Zerubbabel is elsewhere called the son of Shealtiel, the son of Padiah. Well, Shealtiel and Padiah were brothers, according to 1 Chronicles 3, 17 to 18. So apparently, Shealtiel died early on, and according to the law of liverite marriage, his, the role of, his, that role of dynastic succession was assumed by his younger brother, Padiah. Now, so you got Jeconiah. He can't count because he's got the blood curse on him, right? You with me? But he has, nevertheless, children, Padiah and Sheltiel. When Sheltiel dies, which he apparently did, Padiah, according to the law of Leverite marriage, can take his wife and raise up seed that legally belongs to Sheltiel. He raises up seed to the name of Sheltiel. And that's Zerubbabel would be among those. So Zerubbabel is thus bloodlined from Badiah and the, through the wife. And this gets even more complicated because we'll discover that the wife is a descendant of Neri, which is in turn a descendant from Nathan, another son of, of uh, David's, not Solomon, not the royal line, but of Nathan. Solomon is the royal line. Okay. But the, royal, the legal line is coming down through this chain, but not the bloodline, as you'll see in a minute. Levirate marriage, come, the word comes from Levir, Latin word, meaning husband's brother. It's codified in the Torah in Deuteronomy 25, 5 to 10. And it's from this law, we see it occurs all through the scripture, if you watch for it. Padiah here raises up seed for Sheltiel, namely Zerubbabel. Luke links Padiah to Neri, a blood descendant of David, through Nathan rather than Solomon. Okay, with you follow me so far? This also explains difficulty number two, by the way. Now, there's the, there is a remaining difficulty. In Zerubbabel's line, the chronicler lists Zerubbabel's seven sons and one daughter. None of them appear in the genealogy of neither Matthew or Luke. Matthew is tracing Jesus' descent from David through Solomon, and he wrote that the son of Zerubbabel was Abayud. See, Matthew is, tr is tracing, the, he's a lawyer in effect. He is tracing the legal authority and he will take it down through Joseph, the legal father of David. In contrast that, Luke, being a doctor, interested in the humanity of Christ, he follows the line, he views this line through Nathan the second, not the first, Solomon was the first surviving son under Bathsheba. Nathan was the second son, surviving son under Bathsheba. And so he sees it through Nathan and says Risa was that son. So there's different sons. He's following the bloodline. Luke is, Matthew the legal line, Luke the bloodline, or the line of six. Okay. Let's take another look at this another way. Here's Luke. Luke, of course, from Adam to Noah is the same as the Torah and the one we've read so far. Matthew is a Jew. Like any Jew would, he starts with Abraham in his genealogy. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, right on down to David. No problem there. And obviously Luke will go through from Noah, through Shem, Arphaxad, Salah, down through Terah, and finally to Abraham. So far, these are in step. No problem. Abraham, uh, Matthew starts at Abraham rather than Adam. Adam plugs the hole from Adam to Abraham. So far, we have no difficulty. It all makes sense. To the house of David. Okay. And remember, Boaz, Obed, Jesse, and David were predicted twice in Ruth 4 and also encrypted in Genesis 38. Okay. Now let's take a look at the house of David. Matthew goes through the first surviving son of Bathsheba, Solomon. This is the legal line. Rehoboam, right on down through to Josiah. But he goes down through Jehoiakim, Jehoiachin, and all these guys, Salatiel, Zerubbabel. He's following the line of succession, legal succession. And when he gets down to Jake, he becomes to Joseph, who is the legal father of Jesus Christ, but not the blood father. Luke takes a little different path. When Luke gets to David, he doesn't go through Solomon, he goes through Nathan and comes down through that line and he gets to Neri, 
who is the father of the wife that Pedadiah uses to have a son for Shaltiel coming on down to Heli. And Heli apparently had no sons. And when Mary marries Joseph, he adopts Joseph as his own. And I'll come back to that. In other words, Matthew has Joseph's family tree. Luke has Mary's family tree. Now, Shalatiel and Zerubbabel show up in both places, of course. And we get around that with a Leverite marriage issue. There is a strange event that occurs in the Torah. And we're going to get to Zelophehad shortly in our genealogy, but let me t- take it up now. Zelophehad had five daughters, no sons. And he went to Moses and says, what do I do about inheritance? I have no sons. Moses, I'll pray about it. He goes before the Lord. The Lord says, make an exception. So Moses records in the Torah an exception in the rules of inheritance, which if a man has no sons, and if the daughter marries within the tribe, the, the father of the bride can adopt that son as his own and have inheritance flow. This is requested of Moses in Numbers 27. It's granted by Joshua. When you get to the book of Joshua, by now, Zelophehad has passed away because they all passed away, remember, in the 40 years. But the daughters are saying, go to Joshua and say, hey, we um, check it out. We've got a special deal here. And he does, and they do. And so he, takes, he, 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 he grants it. What most people don't think through is what happens in those cases is the husband of the daughter is adopted by his father-in-law. That occurs in Ezra 2 and Nehemiah 7, Numbers uh, 32, and uh, other places. And uh, so that helps explain where some of these genealogies can be confusing because they're not necessarily blood-connected. They may be, you have to understand the lineage. But what's interesting about this very few commentators make any point of this. It turns out that not only is it important, it, the claims of Christ hang on this. This anticipates the lineage of Christ. Joseph is the son-in-law of Heli. The word in the Greek is nomizo. The way it's translated in most Bibles, as he was supposed to be the husband of... You know, it's supposed, the word actually in the Greek means it's reckoned as by law. Reckoned as by law, nomizo. So he's the son-in-law of Heli. It's amazing how many commentators, how many pastors, whatever, don't fully, don't fully recognize that uh, Luke's genealogy is one of Mary and uh, that the virgin birth is required, in effect, to meet the requirements here. It was hinted at in the Garden of Eden, the seed of the woman. That's a contradiction in biology as well as grammar there. Prophesied by Isaiah, a virgin shall conceive in Isaiah 7.14. And it's required by the blood curse on the royal line in Jeremiah 22.30. So a little background that emerges out of the... Out of, these genealogies can be very dry to wade through, and yet they do reward those that will do the digging in terms of insights. So let's get on to chapter 4. Let's get, continue with Judah and Simeon. The sons of Judah, Perez, Hezron, Carmi, Hur, and Shobal. Rei, the son of Shobal, begot Yahath, and Yahath begot Ahumai, and, and Lahad. And these, fam- these are the family of the Zorites, or Zorathites. And these were the father of Etam, Jezreel, Ithma, uh, Idbash, and the name of their sister was Hazeloponi. And Penuel, the father of Gedor, and Ezer, the father of Heshua. And these are the sons of Hur, firstborn of Ephrathah, the father of Bethlehem. And Asher, the father of Tekoa, had two wives, Hila and Nara. And Nara bare him Ahuzam, and Hefer, and Temanai, and Hashashtari. And these were the sons of Nari. The sons of Hela were Zareth and Jezar and Ethmanon, and Koz begot Anub and Zobedah, and the families of Aharahel and the son of Harum. And Jabez, oh, here's a name we heard, was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrow. Wow. I'm not sure I'd want to be named Jabez. Eh? But here's the verse that's caused some, caused some people to do publish a lot of books. <laughs> And Jabez called on God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldst bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and that thine hand might be with me, and that thou wouldst keep me from evil, that it might not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. That's it. That's all that you'll find on him. But it shows that if you can write a book on that, you can sell a lot of books. Not knocking it. But I, 
a lot of what I hear goes far beyond the intention of the text, I believe, but whatever. Let's move on. And Shelob, the brother of Shua, begot Nahir, which was the father of Eshton, and Eshton begot Beth Rapha and Pasia and Tehina, the father of Ernahash, and these are the men of Rechab, and the sons of Kenaz, Othniel, Seriah, and the sons of Othniel, Hathath. And Meonath begot Orpha, and Seriah begot Joab, and the father of the valley of Karashim, and they were craftsmen. And the sons of Caleb, and the sons of Jephunneh, Eru, Elah, and Nam, and the sons of Elah, even Kenaz, and the sons of Yehalil, and Ziph, and Zephah, and Tiriah, and Azareel, and the sons of Ezra were Jether, and Mered, and Ephur, and Yalan, and Sheba, and Miriam, and Shemei, and Ishba, the father of Estomoah. And his wife, Jehudijah, bare Yared, the father of Gedor, and Heber, the father of Soko, and Jekuthiel, the father of Zenoah, and these are the sons of Bithiah, the, the daughter of Pharaoh, which Mered took. And the sons of his wife, Hodiai, the sister of Racham, and the father of Kailai, the Carmite, and Estamoah, the Machathite. And the sons of Shimon were Ammon, and Rinna, and Ben-Hanan, and Talon, and the sons of Ishi were Zoheth, and ben -Zoheth. and the sons of Shelah were the son of Judah, were Ur, the father of Lecha, and Laada, the father of Mereshah, and the families of the house of them that wrought fine linen of the house of Ashbia, and Joachim, and the men of Chorzabah, and Yoash, and Saraf, who had the dominion in Moab, and Yashubilim, and these are ancient things. And these were the potters, and those that dwelt among the plants and hedges, they dwelt with the king for his work, and the sons of Simeon were Nemuel, Yamin, Yareb, Zerah, and Shaul. And Shalom his son, and Mibsham his son, and Mishnah his son, and the sons of Mishma, Hamuel his son, Zakur his son, Shammai his son, and Shammai had sixteen sons and six daughters, but his brethren had not many children, neither did all their family multiply like to the children of Judah. And they dwelt at Beersheba, and Moladah, and Hazarshua. And Bilha and Ezem, and Tolad, and at Bethuel, and at Hormah, and at Ziklag, and at Beth Mar Kebaf, and Hazar Sushim, and uh, Beth Biri, and Sharim, these were their cities unto the reign of David. And their villages were Etam, and Ain, and Rimon, and Tochim, and Ashon, five cities. And all their villages that were round about the same cities unto Baal, these were the habitations and their genealogies. Meshobab, Yamlech, and Yasha, the son of Amaziah, and Joel, and Jehu, the son of Josabiah, and the son of Seriah, the son of Eziel, and Eloani, and Yaqabah, and Yeshohiah, and Asiah, and Idiel, and Yesemiel, and Beniah, and Ziza, the son of Shephi, the son of Alon, the son of Jedediah, and the son of Shimri, and the son of Shemiah. These mentioned by their names were princes in their families, and the house of their fathers increased greatly. And they went to the entrance of Gedor, even to, unto the east side of the valley, to seek pasture for their flocks. And they found fat pasture and good, and the land was wide and not quiet and peaceable, for they of Ham had dwelt there of old. And these written by name came in the days of Hezekiah the king of Judah and smote their tents and habitations that were found there and destroyed them utterly unto his day and dwelt in their rooms because there was pasture there for their flocks. And some of them, even the sons of Simeon, 500 men, went to Mount Seir, having for their captains Pelatiah and Neariah and Rephaiah and Uziel, the sons of Ishi, they smote the rest of the Amalekites that were escaped and dwelt there unto this day. So now we're going to go to the Transjordan tribes. We're talking about the tribes that settled east of the Jordan and uh, Reuben, Gad, and half tribe of Manasseh. Now the sons of Reuben were the firstborn of Israel. Then a parenthetical explanation. For he was the firstborn, for, but... For as much as he defiled his father's bed, his birthright was given to the sons of Joseph, the son of Israel. And the genealogy is not to be reckoned after the birthright. For Judah prevailed above his brethren, and of him came the chief ruler, but the birthright was Joseph's. So the distinction is being made here by the chronicler that the birthright was Joseph's because Reuben lost it. But Judah is the one that has the royal line. In any case, there's a distinction between the royal line and necessarily the birthright. It's interesting to notice how often in the scripture 
God bypasses the firstborn. That's the basic rule, the firstborn. He gets the double blessing and so forth. Seth uh, bypasses Cain. Shem bypasses Japheth. Isaac bypasses Ishmael. Jacob bypasses Esau. Both Jude and Joseph bypass Reuben. Moses passes Aaron. Aaron was his older brother. And David, all his brothers. And there may be others, but these were just the ones that, uh, when I had seven, I thought I had enough. Okay. <laughs> okay. The sons, I say, of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, were Hanak, Palu, Hezron, and Carmi. And the sons of Joel were Shemei, his son, Gog, his son. There's an interesting name. Shemei, his son. Micah, his son, Rei, his son, and Baal, his son, and Bera, his son, whom Tilgath Pelnezer, he's the, that was the ruler of Assyria that uh, made so much history, the king of Assyria, carried away captive. He was prince of the Reubenites. See, by living east of the Jordan, rather, you remember the deal he struck with these, these, these two and a half tribes before the, before the time of Joshua, or before the conquest, said, gee, we, we like this land. And, and Moses said, okay, you can, you, as long as you fight with us, and once we have the land, yes, you can come back here, that'll be yours. They made a deal. And they agreed to that. And so uh, that's what they did. They, when they finally came, when the, after the seven-year battle under uh, Joshua, uh, when they conquered the land, subdued the land, the two, two, the Reuben, Gad, and half the tribe of Manasseh elected to live on the east side of the Jordan, the area that we call Gilead and Bashan, or Bashan and, and uh, so on. So um, now because they're over there, there was a, a, a breach in a sense between them and the rest of this country, the, the nation. But when the Assyrians finally conquer, they're the first ones to get conquered by the Assyrians because that's where they're coming from. And so, uh, so these guys, they were carried away captive as was the prince of the Reubenites. So they're the first to fall, if you will. And his brethren by their families when their genealogy of their generations was reckoned were the chief... Yael and Zechariah, and Bela the son of Zaz, the son of Shema, the son of Joel, who dwelt in the Ararar, even unto Nebo and Baal Meon. These are all areas that are, that are uh, east of uh, the Jordan, north of the, dead, north of the Dead Sea, obviously. Um, I'll show you on a map in a minute. And eastward he, he inhabited unto the entering into the wilderness from the river Euphrates because their cattle were multiplied in the land of Gilead. In the days of Saul, they made war with the Hagarites and fell by their hand. And they dwelt in their tents throughout all the east land of Gilead. And the children of Gad dwelt over and against them in the land of Bashan and Salca and the Joel chief, the Shaphan the next, and Janiai and Shaphat in Bashan. And the brethren of their fathers were Michael, Meshulam, and Sheba, and Jorai, and Yachan, and Zei, and Heber seven. These are the children of Abihail, the son of Huri, the son of Yahroa, the son of Gilead, the son of Michael, the son of Yeshashai, and the son of Yadho, the son of Buz. Ahai, the son of Abdiel, the son of Gunai, the chief of the house of their fathers. And they dwelt in, the, in Gilead in Bashan, and her towns, and all the suburbs of Sharon upon their borders. All these were reckoned by genealogies in the days of Jotham, the king of Judah, and the days of Jeroboam, the king of Israel. Now, the Gilead up there, or in the Bashan, those are very closely related areas, very well known for cattle raising. In fact, the bulls of Bashan are an expression used frequently. In fact, there's even a reference to it by Christ hanging on the cross. So I'll let you chase that down. Gives you an overview here in broad terms. We have obviously, we're on the uh, eastern coast, uh, eastern edge of the, uh, uh, the uh, Mediterranean. And uh, Mount Hermon, the big, the high spot near the top. And as you come down, you come to, uh, and so, as the snows melt at Mount Hermon, they come down to Lake Kenneth, or uh, uh, Lake Galilee, as we would call it. And then uh, down through the Jordan River, through the uh, Dead Sea, and it dead ends at the Dead Sea. There are some rivers that also f feed it. There are two key rivers, the river between Edom and Moab, and the river that divides Bashan and Gilead. But anyway, these are going from north to south, Bashan, Gilead, Moab, Edom, and then down to Midian, where the, where the uh, uh, Mount Sinai is in, in what we would call Arabia today. Not the Sinai Peninsula. That's a recently confirmed discovery, in our opinion. Just a perspective from when I speak of Bashar and Gilead. 
The sons of Reuben, the Gadites, and half the tribe of Manasseh, valiant men, men able to wear buckler and sword and to shoot with bow and skillful at war, were four and forty thousand seven hundred and three score that went out to war. And they made war with the Hagarites, with Hethor, Nephish, and Nodab. And they were helped against them. And the Hagarites were delivered unto their land and all that were with them. For they cried to God in the battle, and he was entreated of them because they put their trust in him. They took away their cattle of their camels, 50,000, of the sheep, 250,000, and of asses, 2,000, and of men, 100,000. And there fell down many slain because the war was of God, and they dwelt in their steads until the captivity. And the children on the half-tribe of Manasseh dwelt in the land, and they increased from Bashan to Baal, Hermon, and Sinir, and unto Mount Hermon. And these were the heads of the house of their fathers, even Ephraim and Ishi, and Elio, and Azrael, and Jeremiah, and Hodaviah, and Yadiel, mighty men of valor, famous men and heads of the house of their fathers. And they transgressed against God of their fathers, and went a-whoring after the gods of the people of the land, whom God destroyed before them. And the God of Israel stirred up the spirit of Pul, the king of Assyria, and the spirit of Tilgath Pelneser, the king of Assyria. And he carried them away, even the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half tribe of Manasseh, and brought them unto Halah, and Habor, and Harah, and unto the river of Gozan, unto this day. Don't confuse this with the fall of the whole northern tribe. That, this is, that will also come. Okay, chapter 6 is going to focus on the house of Levi, the Levites. Sons of Levi, Gershon, Kohath, and Merai. These are three major arms of the Levites. They each have distinct duties that you'll see outlined. Some of them deal with the physical trappings of the tabernacle. Some do with all the, the, the cloths and wrappings and the others, the furniture. But they each have their duties of the three families. As distinct from the priests, the priests are separated out first. These are the Levites that are not descendants of Aaron directly. Anyway, the sons of Kohath, Amram, Izar, and Hebron, and Uziel. And the children of Amram, Aaron, and Moses, and Miriam. The sons also of Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, Eleazar, and Ethamar. The sons of Aaron are the priests. The rest are just other Levites, if you will. Eleazar begot Phinehas, and Phinehas begot Abishua, and Abishua begot Buki, and Buki begot Uzi, and Uzi begot Zerahiah, and Zerahiah begot Marioth, and Marioth begot Amariah, and Amariah begot Ahitab, and Ahitab begot Zadok, and Zadok begot Ahimez. Uh, and Ahimez begot Azariah, and Azariah begot Yohanan, and Yohanan begot Azariah. He it is that executed the priest's office in the temple that Solomon built in Jerusalem. So that's the first the beginning there. And Azariah begot Amariah, and Amariah begot Ahitab, and Ahitab begot Zadok, and Zadok begot Shalom. Shalom begot Hilkiah, and Hilkiah begot Azariah, and Azariah begot Sarai, and Sarai begot Jehozadak, and Jehozadak be went into captivity when the Lord carried away Judah and Jerusalem by the hand of Nebuchadnezzar. The sons of Levi, Gershom, Kohath, and Merari. Samurai. And these are the sons of Gershom. Libni and Shemei and the sons of Kohath were Amram and Isbar and Hebron and Uziel. Sons of Merari, Mali and Mushi. And these are the families of the Levites according to their fathers. Of Gershom, Libni and his son, Yabath his son, and Zimnath his son. And Yabath his son, Edo his son, Zerai his son, Yedari his son, and the sons of Kohath, Aminadab his son, Korah his son, Aser his son, Elkanah his son, Abiashaf his son, and Aser his son, and Tahath his son, Uriel his son, and Uzziah his son, and Shaul his son. And the sons of Elkanah, Amasai, and Ahimoth, as for Elkanah, the sons of Elkanah, Zophai his son, and Nahath his son, Eliab his son, and Yerohob his son, and Elkanah his son, and the sons of Samuel, the firstborn Vishni, and Abiah. And the sons of Merari, Mali, Libni, his son, Shimei, his son, Uzzah, his son, Shimei, his son, Haggai, his son, and Isaiah, his son. And these are they whom David set over the service of song in the house of the Lord after that the ark had rest. And they ministered before the dwelling place of the tabernacle of the congregation with singing until Solomon had built the house of the Lord in Jerusalem. And then they waited on their office according to their order. And these were they that waited on their children, of the sons of Kohathites, Heman the singer, the son of Joel, the son of Shemuel, the son of Elkanah, the son of Jerome, the son of Eliel, the son of Toa, 
the son of Zuf, the son of Elkanah, and the son of Mahath, the son of Amasai, and the son of Elkanah, the son of Joel, the son of Azariah, the son of Zephaniah, and the son of Tehath, the son of Asir, the son of Abiasaph, the son of Korah, the son of Ishkar, the son of Koath, the son of Levi, the son of Israel, the son of his brother Asaph who stood. Now Asaph, of course, becomes a very famous singer and a psalmist, if you will. Psalms 50, 73 to 83 and so forth. Brother Asaph stood in his right hand, even Asaph, the son of Bariach, the son of Shimea, the son of Michael, the son of Bessiah, and the son of Malachiah, the son of Ethne, the son of Zerah, the son of Odiah, the son of Ethan, the son of Zimna, the son of Shimea, the son of Yehath, the son of Gershom, the son of Levi. And their brethren, the sons of Merari, stood on the left hand, Ethan, the son of Kishi, the son of Ebdi, the son of Malach, the son of Hashabiah, the son of Amaziah, and the son of Hilkiah, the son of Amzi, the son of Bani, the son of Shemer, the son of Mali, the son of Mushi, the son of Marari, the son of Levi. These brethren also, the Levites, were appointed unto all manner of service of the tabernacle of the house of God. But Aaron and his sons offered upon the altar of the burnt offerings and upon the altar of incense and were appointed for all the work of the place most holy and to make an atonement for Israel according to all that Moses the servant of God had commanded. All these are the sons of Aaron, Eleazar his son, Phinehas his son, and Beshua, his son, Buki, his son, Uzi, his son, Zariah, his son, Marioth, his son, Amariah, his son, Ahitab, his son, Zadok, his son, he's going to be important under David too, Ahimaaz, his son. Now these are their dwelling places throughout their castles on their coasts of the sons of Aaron, the families of the Kohathites, for theirs was the lot. And they gave them Hebron in the land of Judah and the suburbs thereof round about them. Zadok is a name that's going to become important under David. It's among these that you want to be aware of. But the fields of the city and the villages thereof they gave to Caleb, the son of Yehuna. And to the sons of Aaron, they gave the cities of Judah, namely Hebron, the city of refuge, and Libna and her, with her suburbs, and Jatir and Eshtemoah with her suburbs, and Hillen with her sub suburbs, and Debir with her suburbs, and Eshan with her suburbs, and Beth Shemesh with her suburbs, and out of the tribe of Benjamin, Geba with her suburbs, and Alameth her suburbs, and Anathoth her suburbs, that's where Jeremiah came from, all their cities throughout, their families were 13 cities. You understand, the other 12 tribes inherited regions. The Levites did not inherit land. They, instead of that, because the Lord was their inheritance, they got cities, 48 cities. Six of those were designated cities of refuge. And we'll take a look at that. If we look at the allotments, they, were, they cast lots under, when Joshua conquered the land. Manasseh and Gad and Reuben were east of the Jordan. And then we had way up north, Asher and uh, Naphtali, and uh, they com com coming right on down here to uh, uh, Zebulun, Issachar, Manasseh. Ephraim was a large area, right in the core area. And uh, then Dan was allocated originally down there. They later, t they can't handle it. When Samson dies, they can't handle the Philistines, so they find a, uh, a place way up north and uh, take over up there. That was all predicted by Moses, strangely enough. And then uh, Benjamin and uh, Judah. In fact, Jerusalem is technically right on the border between Benjamin and Judah. And then, of course, Simeon down the south, and it gets, it gets the desert area, and it gradually gets assimilated by the rest of them. Now, the Levites were sound 48 cities. I did not put them on the map because a lot of them are still in doubt exactly where they were. But six of them are cities of refuge. Uh, three on the east of the Jordan, three on the west of the Jordan, and the whole idea of there's a whole thing about the, you want to understand the cities of refuge because they also are, become in effect a anticipatory, um, uh, anticipata anticipation of Jesus Christ. But there they are. Anyway. And under the sons of Koath, which were left of the family of that tribe, were the cities given out of half the tribe, namely out of the half tribe of Manasseh, by lot ten cities. And to the sons of Gershom, throughout their families out of the tribe of Issachar and out of the tribe of Asher came now the tribe of Naphtali, and now the tribe of Manasseh, and Bashan, 13 cities. And, of the, and the sons of Merari were given by lot throughout their families, out of the tribe of Reuben, out of the tribe of Gad, and out of the tribe of Zebulun, 12 cities. And the children of Israel gave to the Levites these cities with their suburbs. And they gave by lot out of the tribe of the children of Judah, and out of the tribe of children of Simeon, and out of the tribe of children of Benjamin, that's down in the south now, these cities which were called by their names. And the residue of the families of their sons of Koath had the cities of their coasts out of the tribe of Benjamin. And they gave them of the cities of refuge 
Shechem in the Mount Ephraim with her suburbs, and they gave also Gezer with her suburbs, and Yachmiam with her suburbs, and Beth Horon with her suburbs. That's where Joshua had that famous battle with the sun stood still in Beth Horon. And Ajalon, remember the moon was in the valley of Ajalon when that long day took place. And Ajalon with her suburbs, and Gath Rimmon with her suburbs. And out of the half tribe of Manasseh, Anna and her suburbs, and Bileam with her suburbs, the family of Remnant of the sons of Kohath, and the sons of Gershom were given out of the family of the half tribe of Manasseh, Golan in Bashan with her suburbs, and Ashtaroth with her suburbs, and out of the tribe of Issachar, Gedesh with her suburbs, and Dabarath with her suburbs, and Ramoth with her suburbs, and Anem with her suburbs, and out of the tribe of Asher, Meshal with her suburbs, and Abdon with her suburbs, and Hukok with her suburbs, and Rehob with her suburbs, and out of the tribe of Naphtali, Kadesh in Galilee with her suburbs, and Haman with her suburbs, and Giriath uh, uh, with her suburbs. And unto the rest of the children of Merari were given out the tribe of Zebulun, Rimmon with her suburbs, Tebar with her suburbs, and on the other side of the Jordan by Jericho, on the east side of the Jordan were given to them out of their tribe of Reuben, Bezer with the wilderness with her suburbs, and Yazer with her suburbs, and Chemoth with her suburbs, and Meath with her suburbs, and out of the tribe of Gad, Ramoth and Gilead with her suburbs, and Mahanim with her suburbs, and Heshbon with her suburbs, and Jazer with her suburbs. How many were counting? How many have we had? I hope there's 48. If they're not 48, we're not through yet. No, I guess it must be 48. All right. Chapter 7. Now we're talking about the genealogy of the six northern tribes. These are the ones that, that, that are west of the Jordan, but north, not part of this. What, what the chronicler is doing is getting out of, you know, taking care of uh, all this rest to be able to focus on what he really wants to talk about. Now the sons of Issachar were Tola and Pua and Yashem and Shimron, four of them. Remember Tola? That was the one that was named after the little moth, right? That's blood red and then peeled three days, peels off and leaves a white spot on the tree. So your sins be a scarlet, they be white as snow. But that's all buried in the name Tola. Anyway, Pua, Yashab, and Shimron four. The sons of Tola, Uzi and Raphiah and Yerariel and Yamai and Yibsam and Shemuel and uh, heads of their father's house, to wit, of Tola. They were valiant men and of might in the generations whose number was in the days of David, uh, two and 20,600. And the sons of Uzi, Israiah, and the sons of Israhiah, and Michal, and Obadiah, and Joel, and Neshiah, five, all of them chief men. And with them, by their generations after the house of their fathers, were bands of soldiers of war, six and 30,000 men, for they had many wives and sons. And their brethren among all the families of Issachar were valiant men of might, reckoned in all by their genealogies, fourscore and seven thousand. The sons of Benjamin, Bela, Becker, and Yadiel, three. The sons of Bela, Esbon, Uzi, and Uziel, and Jeremoth, and Eri, five. Heads of their house and their fathers, five mighty men of valor, were reckoned by their genealogies, twenty and two thousand, thirty and four. The sons of Becker, Zimri, Joash, and Eliezer, and Elamai, and Omri, and Jeremoth, and Abiah, and the Anatoth and Alameth and all these were the sons of Becher. The number of them, after the genealogy by the generations, heads of house of their fathers, mighty men of valor, was 20,200. And sons of Yadiel, Bilhan, the sons of Bilhan, Yehush, Benjamin, Ehud, uh, Yechanah, and uh, Zethan, and Tharshish, and Ahashahar. All these the sons of Jediel, uh, by the heads of their fathers, mighty men of valor, were 17,200 soldiers fit to go out for war and battle. Shupin and also Hupin. There's a, there's a couple, huh? Shupin and Hupin, the children of Ir, and Hushim, the sons of Ahir, the sons of Naphtali. Yaziel, Guni, and Yezer, and Shalom were the sons of Bilha. The sons of Manasseh, Azrael, whom she bare, but his concubine, the Amoritus, Bear Melchior, the father of Gilead. And Melchior took to wife the sister of Hupin and Shupin, whose sister's name was Makaha, and, and the name of the second was Zelophehad, and Zelophehad had daughters. <laughs> Indeed he did. Five of them. And we talked about not Zelophehad earlier, but to refresh you, that was where we had the Torah exception of the rules of inheritance, requested of Moses, granted by Joshua, for the husband of the, of the father of the bride, where the bride had no brothers, he gets adopted by the father of the bride to, be, to continue the line. This anticipates the lineage of Christ because Joseph was the son-in-law of Heli in Luke 3, and as, as indicated in the Greek. And the virgin birth, tended in the Garden of Eden, prophesied by the prophet Isaiah, 
and required in effect by the blood curse on, uh, in Jeremiah 22.30. Well, moving on. Makkah, the wife of Makir, bare a son, called his name Peresh, and the name of his brother was Sherish, and that his sons were Ulam and Rechem. And the sons, sons of Ulam, Bedan, these were the sons of Gilead, the son of Makir, the son of Manasseh, and his sister Hamalekath, bare Ishad, and Abiezer, and Mahala. And the sons of Shemaida were ah Ahayim, and Shechem, and Liki, and Aniam. And the sons of Ephraim, were Shuthala and Barad his son, and Ahath his son, Alada his son, and Ahath his son, and Zabad his son, and Shuleth his son, and Ezer and Iliad, whom the men of Gath that were born in that land slew, because they came down to take away their cattle. And Ephraim, their father, mourned many days, and his brethren came to comfort him. And when he went to his wife, she conceived and bare a son, and called his name Bariah, because it went evil with his house. His daughter was Sherah, who built the Beth Horon, the nether, and the upper, and the Uz and Sherah. And Repha was a son, and Reshep, and Tela his son, and Tahan his son, and Ladan his son, and Maidhud his son, Elishamah his son, Nan his son, Yehoshua his son. And their possessions and habitations were Bethel, and the towns thereof, and eastward, and Naran, and eastward, and Gezer, with the towns thereof, Shechem also, and the towns thereof unto Gaza and the towns thereof. Now, um, this uh, um, lineage in Ephraim culminates in a sense in uh, verse 27 there um, with his son Yehoshua. You know Yehoshua by his more common name, Joshua. Good guy, impressive guy. And the borders of the children of Manasseh, Beth Shean, and her towns, Tanakh and her towns, Megiddo and her towns, Dor and her towns. In these dwelt the children of Joseph, the son of Israel. And the sons of Asher, Imna, Ishua, and Ishuai, and Beriah, and Sarah, their sisters, and the sons of Beriah, Heber, and Malchiah, who is the father of Berzaveth. And Heber begot Japheth, and Shomer, and Hotham, and Shua, their sister. And the sons of Japhet, Pasach, and Bimhal, and Ashavath, and these are the children of Japheth. The sons of Shemer, Ahai, and Roga, and Jehovah, and Aram. And the sons of his brother Helm, Zopha, Imna, Shalish, and Anal. The sons of Zophath, Shua, and Harnefer, and Shual, and Beri, and Imra, and Bezer, and Hod, and Shama, Shamya, and Shilsa, and Ithran, and Bera, and the sons of Yether, Yefune, and Bispa, and Ara. And the sons of Ula, Ara, Haniel, and Rezia. All these were the children of Asher, heads of their father's house, choice and mighty men of valor, chief of the princes. And the number throughout the genealogy of them that were apt to war and to battle was 20 and 6,000 men. Now we have the genealogy of Benjamin. Benjamin begot Bela his firstborn, Ashbel the second, Ahariah the third, Nohoth the fourth, Rapha the fifth. The sons of Bela were Adar and Gera and Abihud. And Abishua, and Naaman, and Ahua, and Gera, and Jephuphan, and Huram. All these were the sons of Ehud. These were the heads of the fathers of the inhabitants of Geba, and they removed them to Manaphath. And Naaman, and Ahiah, and Gera, he removed them, and began Uzzah, and Ahihud. And Shaharim begot children in the country of Moab after he had sent them away. Hushim, Barah, were his wives. And he begot Hodesh, his wife, Jobab, and Zibiah, and Mesha, and Malcolm, and Jeuz, and Shakiah, and Mirna, Mirma. And these were the, his sons, heads of the fathers. And of Hushim he begot Ahitab, and Elpal, sons of Elpal, Eber, and Misham, and Shamed, who built Ono, and Lod, and the towns thereof. Beriah and Shema, who were the heads of the fathers of the inhabitants of Ajalon, who drove away the inhabitants of Gath, and Ohio, Shashak, and Jeremoth, and Zabadiah, and Arad, and Ader, and Michael, and Ispa, and Joha, and the sons of Beria, and the sons of Zabadiah, and Meshulam, and Hezekiah, and Heber. And Ismerai also, and Jezliah, and Dobab, the sons of El Pal, and, uh, and Yakim, and Zikri, and Yadbi, and Elhinai, and Zilpai, and Eliel, 
and Adiah and Bariah and Shimrath, the sons of Shimhi, and Ishban and Heber and Iliel and Abdon and Zikri and Hanan and Hananiah and Elam and Antoliha, and Ehediah and Penuel and the sons of Shashak and Shamsharai and Shehari, Shehariah and Athaliah and Yarasiah and Eliah and Zikri and the sons of Yeroham. These were the heads of the fathers by the generations, chief men. These dwelt in Jerusalem. And at Gibeon dwelt the father of Gibeon. His wife's name was Machai. The, the, and his firstborn son, Abdon and Zur and Kish and Baal and Nadab and Gedor and Ahio and Zachar and Mikloth begot Shimei. And these also dwelt with their brethren in Jerusalem over and against them. And there begot Kish, and Kish begot Saul, and Saul begot Jonathan, and Malchishua, and Abinadab, and Eshbel. We're uh, raising some background here about Kish because uh, there'll be a very brief mention, but uh, Saul's death will be the opening uh, par portion of the narrative as it starts after this chapter, after the next chapter. And the son of Jonathan was uh, Meribaal, and Meribaal begot Micah, and the sons of Micah were Pithon, and Melech, and Tariah, and Ahaz. And Ahaz begot Jehoda, and Jehoda begot Alemeth, and Azimeth, and Zimri, and Zimri begot Mosa. And uh, you see that Saul, Saul is, the, the, the line of Kish is included by the chronicler because of the importance of Saul forthcoming. And Moses begot Binia, and Rapha was his son, and Elias his son, and Azel his son, and Azel had six sons whose names are these, Azrakam, Bokaru, and Ishmael, and Shariah, and Obadiah, and Hanan, all of these were the sons of Azel. And the sons of Eshek, his brother, were Ulam, his firstborn, Jehush the second, and Elaphelet the third. The sons of Ulam were the mighty men of valor, archers, and had many sons, and the sons' sons, 150, all these are the sons of Benjamin. Now, there's something rather interesting. Obviously, it's pretty dreary to have to wade through these names. I don't know how else to do it. But um, there's one thing to see if you're alert. Did you notice who's missing? We've gone through the tribes east of the Jordan, gone through the tribes of Judah and Simeon to the south. We've gone through the tribes in the, the six tribes in the north, west of Jordan. You notice someone that's not mentioned? Did you pick up on that? A little test question. There's a tribe, a whole tribe, that's not mentioned. Who do you think it is? Make a guess. What tribe is not mentioned in the book of Revelation, chapter 7? What tribe is not mentioned in First Chronicles? Interesting. What's going on there? It's a subject for another evening. Let's move on. Chapter 9. So all Israel was reckoned by genealogies. And behold, they were written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah who were carried away to Babylon for the transgression. Now the first inhabitants that dwelt in their possessions in their cities were the Israelites, the priests, the Levites, and the Nethanims. In Jerusalem dwelt of the children of Judah and of the children of Benjamin and of children of Ephraim and Manasseh. Well, now that's kind of interesting. These are the tribes returning from Babylon, Right? And they, they're coming to they're going to detail the people that are coming to there. You notice who they're from? Benjamin, the children of Ephraim and Manasseh. I thought they were lost tribes. We're going to discover that the whole concept of the lost tribes comes from a misunderstanding, misreading of the scripture. Here, the first ones mentioned coming back were people from, that are from, ethnically from Ephraim and Manasseh. Uthai, the son of Amahud, the son of Omri, the son of Imri, the son of Bani, the son, children of Perez, the son of Judah. Children of Sarah, there we go. And of the Shilonites, Aziah, the firstborn, and his sons, and the sons of Zerah, Yehuel, and the brethren, 690. The sons of Benjamin, Salu, the son of Meshulam, the son of Hodaviah, the son of Hazanua, the, and Ibaniah, the son of Yerohan, the Allah, the son of Uzi, the son of Mikri, the Meshulam, the son of Shephathiah, the son of Ruel, the son of uh, Ibnijah. And their brethren, according to their generations, 956, all these men were chief of the fathers of the house of their fathers and of the priests, Jediah, Jeherib, and Jachin, and Azariah, the son of Hilkiah, and the son of Meshulam, the son of Zadok, the son of Marioth, the son of 
Ahitab, the ruler of the house of God. And Adiah, the son of Yeroam, the son of Pasher, the son of Malchijah, the Messiah, the son of Adiel, the son of Yazerah, the son of Meshulam, the son of Meshulameth, the son of Immer, and their brethren, the heads of the house of their fathers, a thousand seven hundred and threescore, every very able men for the work of the service of the house of God. And of the Levites, Shemei, the son of Hashab, the son of Azrakam, the son of Hashabiah, the sons of Marai, Merari, um, Bakbakar, the Heresh, Galal, and Mephani, the son of Mecca, the son of Zikri, the son of Asaph, Obadiah, the son of Shemei, the son of Galal, the son of Jethun, the Merakiah, the son of Asa, the son of Elkanah, that dwelt in the villages of the Netophathites. And porters were Shalom, and Akub, and Talman, and Haham, and their brethren, and Shalom was the chief who hitherto waited in the king's gate eastward, and were porters in the companies of the children of Levi. And Shalom, the son of Korah, the son of Abiasaph, the son of Korah and his brethren, the house of the father of Korathites, were over the work of the service, keepers of the gates of the tabernacle, and their fathers being over the host of the Lord were keepers of the entry. And Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, was the ruler over them in time past, and the Lord was with them. Phinehas is going to be quite the, quite the leader. And Zechariah, the son of Meshelamiah, was the porter of the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. All these were, which were chosen to be porters in the gates of the 212, two, were 212. These were reckoned by the genealogy in their villages, whom David and Samuel the seer did ordain in their set office. So they and their children had the oversight of the gates of the house of the Lord, namely the house of the tabernacle by wards. In four quarters were the porters toward the east, west, north, and south. And their brethren, which were in the villages, were to come after seven days from time to time with them. For these Levites, the four chief porters, were in their set office and were over the chambers and treasures, treasuries of the house of God. And they lodged around the house of God because the charge was upon them, and the opening thereof every morning pertained to them. And certain of them had the charge of the ministering vessels that they should bring them in and out by tally. We're going to take a look at how they're laid out, and there's some surprises coming, so bear with me here. Some of them also were appointed to oversee the vessels and all the instruments of the sanctuary and the fine flour and the wine, the oil, and the frankincense and the spices. And some of the sons of the priests made the ointment of the spices. Menatiah, one of the Levites, who was the firstborn of Shalom the Korahite, had the set office over the things that were made in the pans. And, uh, and other of the brethren of the sons of the Korahites were over the showbread and to prepare it every Sabbath. And these are the singers chief of the fathers of the Levites who remaining in the chambers were free, for they were employed in that work day and night. These chief fathers of the Levites were chief throughout their generations. These dwelt at Jerusalem. And in Gibeon, dwelt the father of Gibeon, Jehiel, and his wife's name was Makkah, and his firstborn son was Abdon, and Zur, and Kish, and Baal, and Ner, and Zab, and Gedor, and Ahio, and Zechariah, and Mikloth, and Mikloth begot Shimeon, and they also dwelt with their brethren at Jerusalem over and against their brethren. And uh, now the, gene the genealogical record here is almost identical to that which we had in chapter 8. But the, but the chronicler is setting the stage for dealing with the death of Saul in chapter 10. And so in the succession of David, so that's why he's repeated some of this. And there begot Kish, and Kish begot Saul, there we are again. And begot, Saul begot Jonathan, and Kishua, and uh, Benadab, and Eshbaal, and the son of uh, uh, Jonathan was Meribaal, and Meribaal begot Micah, and the sons of Micah were Pithon, and Melech, and Tahria and Ahaz, and Ahaz begot Zarah, and Zarah begot Alameth, and Asmaveth, and Zimri, and Zimri begot Moza. And Moza begot Binia, and Rephiah his son, and Eliasa his son, and Ezel his son. Ezel had six sons, whose names are these, Azrakam, Bokaru, Ishmael, and Shiriah, and Obadiah, and Hanan. These were the sons of Ezel. Okay. Getting back to the 12 tribes. Remember we had the four under Leah, then we had two under Rachel's, uh, Dan and Naphtali. And then Z under Zilpah, we had a couple, Gad and Asher. And then Leah, Issachar, and Zebulun. And then finally, Rachel's with Joseph and Benjamin. And each one has, each name has a meaning, uh, actually several possible ascribable meanings to each one of those. Okay, when we see them listed, 20 times in the scripture, in Genesis, they're listed the original origin, of course. They're listed when they're entering Egypt. They're listed just for now where Joseph excuse me, Jacob, 
pronounces a prophecy on each one of the tribes. That's a very interesting study to deal with in Genesis 49. Then they're numbered as they enter Egypt, Joseph omitted in Exodus. In the book of Numbers, the, the leaders are mentioned, the first census, Levi's omitted in both of those. Then the order of the camp, we're going to talk about that in a minute. The offerings, the order of March, the spies, the second census, dividing line. These are in the various chapters and numbers, they are uh, listed, the 12 tribes. In Deuteronomy, the blessings and the cursings, they're listed there. The blessings of Moses, Simeon's omitted there for some reason. And the order is geographical, uh, Benjamin is before Joseph. Then in Joshua, we have the allocation of the territories and uh, in four groups to furnish cities for four classes of priests. And then we have the Song of Deborah in J Judges 5, where they're listed again. Judah and Simeon are omitted there. And then in First Chronicles, we just have gone through all of that. We're going to hear their officers are going to be listed in uh, two chapters, 12 and 27, briefly the officers. Then Ezekiel is going to go through the 12 tribes as they, divide, they get divisions again during the millennium. Very interesting chapter, 48. And of course, Revelation, they're listed where they're sealing the 12,000 from each tribe. The Jewishness of Revelation is often overlooked by many commentators. Now, there are 12 signs in the Matzeroth. We call them by the Gentile names, Virgo down to Leo. Um, but it's interesting, each one of these is assigned to one of the tribes. The tribes is ascribed to the symbols, not the pagan symbols, but the, the, uh, the original uh, pre-Babylon uh, labels. And it's interesting that we have three of these, Zebulun, Issachar, and Judah are the camp of Judah. Benjamin, Manasseh, and Ephraim are the camp of Ephraim. And Gad, Simeon, and Reuben are the camp of Reuben. And then Naphtali, Asher, and Dan, the camp of Dan. And they have tribal symbols for each one of them, but for the camp of Dan, it's the eagle. It was originally the serpent, but then it was an a, a, a eagle with a serpent in its mouth, and it becomes the eagle. Um, and then the man and the ox, which become very similar to the symbols that are still echoed in the, in the pagan corruption of these things. But uh, it's interesting when they camp, camp Dan's on the north, Reuben on the south, Ephraim on the west, Judah on the east. Let's take a look at how, in Numbers chapter 2, if you take this, you can, you can lay this all out for yourself. Obviously, in the middle of the camp is the tabernacle, and around that tabernacle is a place for the Levites. And the door of the tabernacle is opening to the eastward. The bottom on our chart here. So the Levites, the, Mo, uh, the Moses and the priests are on the eastern side. Those are the descendants of Aaron. But the other three families, the Kohathites, Gershonites, and Merarites, camped on the southwest north side of the tabernacle itself. But that whole area was reserved for the Levites. Now, understand the precision of the rabbis. Camp of Judah was to camp east of the Levites. The camp of Reuben was to camp south of the Levites. Now, if you're going to be strictly following the rules, that denies you the area called southeast. Because if you're southeast, you're no longer east of the Levites or south of the Levites. You with me? And so only the cardinal directions are going to be ordained because Judah is told to camp east of the Levites. Reuben, south of the Levites, and so on, all the way around. So I don't know how big the camp of Levites were, but whatever it was, we're going to use that as a unit to lay this out. The width of the Levites is whatever it is. We're going to make then the, each of these camps are going to be proportional to the population. So if we, take the, if we take a look at the Levites, they have the tabernacle in the middle. And it turns out, if you add the Gershonites, Kohathites, Merarites, add it all up, you've got about 22,000 people there. However, however many they take to camp, whatever size that is, that's our unit. Okay, well, Judah has to camp east of the Levites, which means they can camp as wide as the Levites are, and they take as much as they need. They, they, they have areas that are prohibited. They can't go southeast or northeast. That's not following the directions. They tried very hard to follow directions. Reuben, likewise, with the symbol of the man, uh, they camp. the camp of Reuben would be uh, to the uh, south. And likewise, Ephraim, with the symbol of the ox, camps to the west, and Dan, with the eagle, camps to the... Now, if, how much space do they need? Well, that's proportion to their populations, whatever that width is. Okay, we know what the populations are nominally. Judah's 186,000. Uh, you know, all from all, this is all out of Numbers chapter 2. Uh, and both, man, and both uh, Reuben and Dan are roughly 150,000. 
The largest is Judah with 186. The smallest is Ephraim with 108. Let's take a helicopter and take, get some altitude here and see what this thing looked like from the air. The camp of Israel, if it followed the directions that are in the Torah, would lay out like a cross, with the longest arm being the, at the arm of Judah. When Balaam is looking down from, uh, from the mountains from, to advise Balak, that's probably what he would be seeing. I think that's interesting. I think that's interesting. And the four, the four ensigns that are right around conform to the four faces of the cherubim that are around the throne of God. The lion, the ox, the man, and the eagle. So I think that's kind of fun. While we're through this dreary trek, through a lot of names that we can't pronounce, let alone understand, uh, but now that, that finishes section one of First Chronicles. Chapters 10 through 29, the reign of David begins, and now we're going to get into narrative, and there will be action and lessons and insights as we move on. So the next section, section of the study will be 10 through 29, but for next time, for the next session, uh, just read four, four chapters, 10, 11, 12, and 13, four chapters for the next session. And let's stand for a closing word of prayer.